Welcome to Inside XTUML, the how-to series. My name is Dean MacArthur, and I am joined by Keith Brown. In this segment, the topic of creating documentation from XTUML diagrams will be discussed. While XTUML models are an efficient means of communicating the functional details of a product, the traditional paper document is still preferred by external reviewers and government agencies. Also, if much of the specification is already in document form, then it is often more efficient to place model details and diagrams into the document rather than transcribing every detail into the model. In either case, it is necessary to create a document from the XTUML model. To create these documents, there are three approaches. You can use copy to capture an image of the diagram and then paste it into the document, or you could use Bridgepoint DocGen utility, or finally, you could use a custom model compiler to query the model and translate it into the appropriately formatted document. Copy and paste will be the first option to be discussed. When using copy and paste, the first step is to capture an image of the canvas. This is performed by positioning the mouse in an open portion of the canvas and then pressing the right mouse button. A menu will appear that includes the copy selection. Completing the selection will place an image of the canvas in the clipboard buffer of your desktop. Now that an image of the XTML diagram has been created, the final step is to paste it into the destination document. This two-step approach is natively supported by the XTUML.org editor and is popular with its users. Now my colleague Keith Brown will demonstrate this approach using the GPS watch. Let's explore how to create some documentation with Bridgepoint. We're going to use the example GPS watch project from the welcome. Once the GPS watch project is created, I'm going to expand it and then open the system package diagram. Now, if we right click out here in the canvas and select copy, this copies the graphics from this canvas into the clipboard. Next, we'll switch over to our word processing program. Here I'm using WordPad, but Microsoft Office Word or any other of the Office tools would work just as well. Create a header and use Control V to paste the image. And now my image is inside of my document. One important point to remember is that using the context menu on the canvas itself and selecting copy is different than selecting an individual element or a group of elements and using the copy context menu on those elements. If I copy here and then switch over to my word processing program and paste, I will get a different output. Let's see that now. So when I paste inside of my word processing program, you see a large amount of SQL that's pasted. This is actually the underlying model data that's part of the Bridgepoint application model. This is obviously not what we want when we're creating documentation. So it's important to remember that we do not want to select individual elements when we paste. We want to select the canvas itself and use the copy menu from the canvas before we create our document. Now you may be thinking, well what if I only want to take a piece of this canvas and put that into my documentation? 
Well, what we have to do is once again use the Canvas context menu and select copy. Now we switch to an image processing program. Here I'm using Microsoft Paint. We paste our clipboard contents and then select the element that we want and crop it. Then once again we select and copy. Now in our document we can create an entry for this individual element. And when we paste, just the element that we cropped out in the image processing program shows up. The DocGen utility available as part of Bridgepoint will be the second option to be discussed. With DocGen, modelers can produce in a single step a complete document describing each element in the model and its relationship to the remainder of the system. This utility is invoked by selecting Create Documentation in the pop-up menu associated with the Model Explorer window. Once initiated, a complete electronic document is produced in HTML format and is stored within the project. This GPS project has four components and lots of description information, analysis, and internals inside of these components. And to generate all of this documentation by hand would be extremely tedious, but the Bridgepoint tool has a built-in document generation facility. So if you use the context menu on the project itself, you can select Create Documentation. This runs the internal tool and gathers all of the model information, including the canvas images, the descriptions, and the internals of the components themselves, and creates an HTML file that contains all of this information which in this case is quite a bit as you can see here. This HTML file is stored inside the project under the doc folder. To see the doc folder you have to open the C++ C++ perspective. and we can expand it and here's the HTML file and here's the folder that contains all of the images. This folder can be browsed to on disk as well to manipulate the data or to open it in a different web browser. A custom model compiler constructed to translate the XTUML model into a custom document format will be the third option to be discussed. This option is the most flexible and leverages the full capabilities of the XTUML approach. In some of the Learning Series episodes on YouTube, model compilation was used to translate the XTUML model into executable code. To perform this translation, the model compiler queries the model data and then rearranges the data into the desired output format. This works for generating code, and it also works for producing documentation. Since you control the format, the output is completely customized. If you would like to learn more about this approach, I recommend you view the Learning Series episode, Customizing a Model Compiler. The XML file produced by this example model compiler can combine with a style sheet to produce a fully custom report. This concludes our discussion of how to create documentation. Please continue to regularly check the XTUML channel on YouTube. For more segments in the Inside XTUML, 
How-To Series. Thank you for joining us.